Thank you. My name is uh, Greg Delon. I'm the COO of UIX Global, and uh, I love cities. I've always loved cities, and I've been very fortunate to work in a lot of wonderful cities. And I want to welcome you to the boomtown of the cultural metropolis in Black Rock City, Nevada. So what, I, what I'm going to be talking about today is something called uh, program-based planning. But fundamentally, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is you. The fact that not only did you choose to come out to Black Rock City and you made a whole series of investments and uh, commitments to do that, but then the fact that you actually are here right now. Some of you have been here all day long, uh, are listening to what, what's been discussed all day. I've been here all day and have been listening to the different pieces. And a part of what I'm going to be trying to do today to close things out is to bring together these different elements, the different innovations you heard, the different ideas you heard, and bring them together in this platform that we call program-based planning. Next one. So, Black Rock City, the ephemeral city. I want you all to think about for a moment how many hours, how much energy, how much creativity, how much capital human and otherwise, that you have put into being here today. There's going to be a population of probably over 65,000 people here. A significant number of those people are involved in theme camps, projects that are going on all year around. Think about the time, the investment, all that. And that's fundamentally what makes this city exist. So Black Rock City is a program-based virtual community that only exists for about six days, six, seven days. So the challenge is, how can we take all this and bring it back to the default world? And that's what a lot of people have been talking about today. So that's going to be the challenge to you. Uh, I'll talk more about that. But essentially, this is about you all and how we can bring this back to the world. So the things that are going on in terms of paradigm shifts have to do with how we're relating. Relationships between auto autonomy and cooperation. Earlier in the day, Yvonne Henning talked about educational shifts, amazing things that are going on that are about sharing. Uh, new university, new uh, uh, education systems like Singularity U, Presidio in San Francisco, California College of Arts Design MBA, online education for free from MIT and Harvard that's available to people, the sharing economy, all these sorts of resources, new models in civic cooperation, public-private partnerships. These are changing the relationships of autonomy and cooperation. Communities, states, countries, we're realizing that we need to go cooperate. The issues at hand are global, and we need to cooperate on those. So we need to figure out how to tap into all the human resources we have to make these things happen. So there's all these great things going on, but fundamentally, the question is, how do we tap those things to address true human needs? Right now, we still have three billion people that are cooking on open fires. We have 2.6 billion people that don't have uh, access to basic sanitation. 1.1 million people that do not have access to clean drinking water. 760 million adults that are illiterate. 1.5 million children that are malnourished. How can we start to address those things? One of the keys is cities. Right now, half the population of the globe is in cities. By 2030, 60% will be in cities. That makes these issues urban issues. Next one. So cities are, have a unique role and a unique capacity in this because they provide a series of access and feedback loops that can turn them into innovation laboratories. So what we're, we're working on at our work group at UIX is how to, how to create innovation ecosystems in communities that are incorporating all the different pieces that were talked about today and beyond that to tap into uh, the, the, the processes of the city so that it becomes a place where we can solve these problems, we can share the problems with other communities, we can create smarter cities, using technology, we can get greener cities using technology and new, new uh, techniques for cities and fundamentally make our lives better as human beings while saving the planet. Next one. 
So pro pro program-based planning, again, is essentially how do we combine these things and cluster them around these public-private civic cooperations. Cities don't have money anymore. Redevelopment models are collapsing because of lack of funding for cities. So it's extremely important that we start with public-private partnerships that uh, are, are creating value for communities and are not necessarily about corporations or individuals taking advantage of communities, but truly being corporate citizens and investing in the local community. From that, there's creative culture and creative economy uh, potential, which is tr totally manifest here in Black Rock City. Social venture and impact investing, which was also talked about earlier today, about how can, how can we make the investments that may not be the highest yields, but have much larger triple bottom line yields for larger communities. The smart cities and green cities phenomena that are going on around the world. Shared economy and co-working, shared economy and gift economy that's going on out here. A wonderful laboratory out here for that. Entrepreneur and small business support systems that are a combination of uh, private financing, but also all of these touch on policies. How do, how do cities attract and retain talent to uh, uh, invigorate the local economy? And then uh, traditional planning ideas, form-based planning, uh, which is about creating three, uh, uh, taking a three-dimensional approach to building effective cities and walkable cities and all that. And with program-based planning, trying to take it to that fourth dimension with events, with workshops, with seminars like this, but at different scales so that people are engaging and talent is engaging. People are finding each other and without the necessary help of government are creating change. They're manifesting the change that they want to see in their community and they're doing it in some cases despite the government. We see that going on in a lot of uh, places in the world and it's because they have access to information, they have access to support networks that are global. So for this to happen, we need to think about these efforts uh, being value-based on a local basis. So if we're doing something, working with a small community in the United States in the south of the Midwest, the chances are the value base is going to be slightly different than what we see out here on the playa. We need to make these things customized so that people are engaged and they're excited and it's built around their local value system. Activities oriented. About, it's about seminars, cultural events, tapping into the arts community, tapping into uh, ways of, of creating, bringing community together and having discussions that result in true results. And culture driven. So what are the cultural resources of any community? What are their aspirations for attracting uh, new types of culture and where they're going? So see, these are some of the steps for implementing these uh, sorts of activities in uh, program-based planning. So all this comes together with working with, with cities, but then also with, uh, with private investors. So what, what we're trying to do with our work group is we're working with city governments, in some cases with chief innovation officers. That's a, a new phenomena that's going on uh, a, around the country and in some cases around the world. Those are only a handful in the United States now, but essentially city policy, a city department that's focused on innovation, attracting talent, attracting investment. So we're working uh, in the case of uh, San Leandro in the San Francisco Bay Area, we're working with the chief innovation officer there, but we're also going to be working with local property investors and local business people that can close the loop for the capital and the, the uh, involvement and investment that we really need to attract new talent and attract the excitement that a community needs in order to retain that talent, built in this case on a particular resource that's a 100 gigabyte per second fiber optic loop network that was put in through a public-private uh, partnership uh, with a company called IOS Soft in San Leandro. So that was a corporate citizen stepping up and fitting, fitting the bill for this new fiber optic system, which will be one of the fundamental pieces of helping this community grow. In every community, it's different. Working in developing countries and developing economies, there's other factors, there's other types of production chains, but you're tying into cultural phenomena, cultural resources, and then adapting policies that can bring those pieces together uh, to, to create community and create growth. So how are you going to make this happen? What are you going to do when you come back from the playa and you hose off all your stuff and you still don't get all the dust off and you put it away for next year? Are you going to do something to engage your community before next year? I hope you do. 
if you can check us out at program, uh, programbasedplanning.org. There's some more information there. But fundamentally, the basics are that you need to find other people that have different talents than you in a co-working space, in a co-op, uh, through events, hopefully, that then you can create the synergies, you can create the excitement, and you can create the change that you want to see manifest in your community. Thank you.